The age old question, does a witch really need tools? So often you'll come across kind of two camps of practice where witches will use a lot of tools, so herbs, crystals, candles, tools of like physical tools like your wand, your cauldron, whatever. Then you'll find the camp of witches who are like, you don't need any of that stuff. Just use your mind and visualization. You've got all of it that you need inside. And while both of them have their own perks and cons and whatever, I have always kind of wondered about that. And over the years, I've tried to find a way to describe why I love to use tools. And I've always kind of struggled to find like a good analogy for it. And today, ironically, whilst I was cooking, the idea came to me. So this is not like the most scientific way to describe this by any means, but this is how I view using tools. And again, tools are going to include anything outside of just you that you're using for a spell or any kind of working that you're doing. Mostly in this example, we're gonna use spell work. So for our example here, our need, AKA why we're doing our spell, is going to translate into our analogy as we're hungry. Our belly requires some food. So we decide we're gonna go deal with that. And so we've decided to make rice. When you go to make your rice, you can do it a few different ways. And so most of us, anyone who has watched, the like rice TikTok and like I think he's also on a few different places but there's this one guy in particular that yells at people for this when you get your rice you need to wash it <laughs> and so that translates because I feel like everyone across the board would agree typically you should wash your rice before you use it and so in magic this is your cleansing grounding step now not everyone washes their rice not everyone's gonna cleanse and ground before they do their spell work Next, you have the cooking of the rice, which is basically you have your two things, your rice and your water. So the basic premise of a basic bowl of rice is you're gonna have rice and water to cook it. This is your visualization and your intention. From there, you could continue and be done. You could eat your bowl of rice. Is it gonna taste great? Probably not. You might wanna add like some butter and salt, <laughs> but like really, you could technically eat that and it would fill the need. It would fill up your belly and you would be full. You can add stuff to it. So instead of just plain old rice, you could start to add seasonings to it. Now personally, when I actually like literally go to cook this, I have a pre-made mix, but <laughs> let's say you have your rice and you decide that you're going to add some seasonings to it. I like to make what I think is like some strange combination of <laughs> like street taco soup-ish. So I don't know exactly what it's called because I've combined a number of recipes and just kind of winged it on my own. <laughs> but basically, you would take your seasonings, so let's say we're gonna make like a taco kind of flavored rice, so you could add like the pre-made like taco seasonings or like add some different herbs and spices and whatever to make it to the flavor you personally really enjoy. Now for the spell aspect, this would be adding in like your tools as in like herbs. Each one, it's gonna have its own flavor, it's also gonna have its own magical intention and purposes, and also it does contribute to your overall meal, it's going to give you benefits that you wouldn't have had with just your plain bowl of rice, right? Same with your magic. Then I like to always add corn and black beans into mine, and so this would be like adding in crystals or candles or anything like that. Again, we're just enhancing this as we go. And then the last thing that I always like to add is I add in, and I can't remember, I think it was from like street corn or something like that of a recipe. Anyways, it's a thing, it makes it creamy. But basically what I add is a little bit of mayo and then some ranch and then probably usually also some cheese. So basically just adding the dairy side of it. And so at this stage, this would be looking into like your timing and stuff. So it could be like, as you're adding in those, it would be the equivalent of looking at days of the week, moon phase, zodiac sign, season we're in, anything like that. And so as you can see, as you start to add more things, you're adding more nutrients to your meal, AKA you're adding in more magical intention and magical energy into your spell. But at the end of the day, the baseline of what you're trying to accomplish is completed. Your belly will be full whether you have a bowl of plain rice or a very strange combination of like 
taco soup-ish, because it's usually, my mind is usually the consistency similar to soup. And I found that's the best way to describe why I like to add all of these different things into a spell. Because really, you don't need all of it, and you can omit different parts of it depending on what you want to do. You could totally skip all of the seasoning side of it and just add in like some veggies and add in like whatever sauce you want to and have a completely different thing. You could omit like the mayo and the ranch so you don't really care what day of the week or the zodiac or the moon phase or anything like that. So anyways, I hope this was kind of helpful to give you some ideas of the reasons of using your tools and again, this is just kind of a random like metaphor of how to do a spell, but like a lot of times some people will feel like you don't know if you want to include herbs or you want to include crystals or you want to include candles or you want to include like color or zodiac or days of the week or seasons. There's so many different ways to go about a spell and I feel like this is the easiest way to explain how you don't need all of these things. You can totally make it different however you want, add or subtract as you desire for your spell, but ultimately it does fulfill the need. It's just your own personal taste. Because some people will probably not think my crazy concoction is a wonderful meal. To them, that sounds nasty. And that's totally fine. You're not eating at my house. <laughs> but for us, this is something we have multiple times a week. And it's one of my favorites to cook. It's easy. It's quick. It keeps you full for a long time. Usually it tastes pretty good. I made the mistake of adding enchilada sauce last time. That did not end well. But again, that's also with spells. You find out what works and what doesn't and you switch it up and you change it. And it's very similar too for like if you're following a spell from a book, you're reading a recipe and then eventually you figure out where you can change things and tweak things, switch it up a little bit that works best for you. I hope this was helpful and gave you a kind of really <laughs> strange way of describing the using or not using of tools in witchcraft. Obviously, I am usually pretty on board with wanting to use all of the various things, but other people, they're perfectly content not, and that's totally fine. It's whatever works for you. It is your quote-unquote belly that you're filling with food. So anyways, that is going to be it for this very strange video. I would love to hear how you describe the use of tools in witchcraft, such as like herbs, crystals, wands, candles, all the stuff of witchcraft. Again, this was the best analogy I can think of, and I've been trying to think of one for years, and then it just came to me today as I was cooking, so. Of course, being getting more into the kitchen with Tree, that makes sense. So anyways, thank you for watching this video. I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. Huge thank you to my patrons. I'll have their names here on the screen. If you'd like to support me and get access to exclusive content, it is patreon.com slash nightwillowcrafts. Make sure to like and subscribe. I post every single day. And until next time, thank you so much for watching and bless be.